بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری بوڈی اینڈ اسلام علیکم سو ویلکم ٹو دا لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی سیون اینڈ دس از اباؤٹ پرفارمنگ کوانٹیٹیو رسک انالیسز ویل دس از دس سیشن از ان کانٹینیوشن ود دس فسٹ سیشن وی ہیڈ آن دس کوانٹیٹیو رسک انالیسز Um, though uh, other parts are equally important and uh, even qualitative risk analysis is the one which is mostly used on projects uh, but uh, quantitative risk analysis is very important dim uh, dimension of risk management as well uh, but uh, what happens in uh, actual life um, people do not have a good grasp of the things as far as quantitative risk analysis is concerned Uh, so they do not give uh, adequate attention to that. So my um, uh, thinking of uh, giving it emphasizes just is just based on that very fact. So, uh, but before we actually, uh, you know, start with uh, the lecture uh, number 27, let's have the summary and uh, uh, what we had uh, talked the other day on quantitative risk analysis. So, uh, what was uh, quantitative uh, risk analysis? We had talked about and uh, we want to assign some numerical value uh, to the impact of one project on uh, one objective. Uh, so, mm, that was uh, done in quantitative uh, risk analysis. And uh, then we had talked about the quantitative risk analysis process, uh, perform called quantitative risk analysis process and uh, Uh, we had discussed about few inputs and then we had talked a little bit uh, more on uh, tools and techniques we use in data gathering, analysis, simulation, modeling, sensitivity analysis, uh, monetary, uh, 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 monetary value and then um, uh, the updates to risk register. And, uh, Uh, as far as probability distributions are concerned, what are these distributions, how this distribution can actually help us in simulation and deciding about our uh, probabilistic values. And then uh, sensitivity analysis was discussed uh, by fixing one variable, uh, by fixing all other variables and changing one variable and uh, having the result on um, this uh, one uh, variable uh, is called sensitivity analysis. So if you want to have the value of x and x is dependent on um, uh, y and z and y and z are independent variables and x is dependent variable. So if we uh, fix z at uh, one base value and then we change uh, the value of uh, y within that limit which has we specified earlier. Uh, so that is called, this analysis is called sensitivity analysis. And then uh, monetary value analysis, uh, uh, MVA, we have talked about uh, that. Uh, so uh, how to assign uh, monetary values. Uh, we are going to, we've just uh, discussed the definition over there and over there we have discussed that. We are going to talk on that in detail in upcoming slides. So this is, uh, this is going to happen today. Uh, and then uh, we mm, uh, we had talked about uh, the modeling. What do you mean by model? And what do you mean by simulation? Remember the random numbers concept and uh, put in some restriction on your random number uh, uh, thing. And you uh, so this is a very good example of your wallet. So you may have uh, currency notes of five thousand hundred. Uh, and uh, 550 and 10 and 20. So let's say we are having uh, um, five nodes of 5,000 and seven of 1,000 and two of 500 and three of 100 and one of 50, one of 20 and one of 10. So we are having how much, how many no nodes we do have, like mm, seven plus five, uh, so uh, 12, 14, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we are having 20 nodes in our wallet, right? 
but if I ask you, okay, so this is what, but you have to choose only uh, 500 nodes, okay, 500, 100 nodes, okay. So how many now you are left with? Five. So uh, simulation is simply is that. So you are having the options of universe. Now you can choose any number, but then you are put in some condition. Okay, you can choose only between 100 and 500. So that is that is. Uh, but I can choose any node. ये जो दो नोट पांच सौ के हैं, तीन नोट सो. इन में से मैं आप कोई भी चूज कर सकता हूँ. तो अब वो हो सकता है एक नया नोट हो, एक पुराना हो. इस तरह इसका एक नया हो, एक पुराना हो. But मैं कोई भी नोट सेलेक्ट कर सकता हूँ. इसके अंदर से तो ये जो चीज है दैट इज कॉल्ड सिमुलेशन एंड देन वी हैड टॉक्ड अबाउट ऑब्जेक्टिवली डिटरमिन प्रोबेबिलिटीज हाउ डू वी डिटरमिन द प्रोबेबिलिटीज ऑब्जेक्टिवली एंड फॉर दैट वी हैव डन वन केस स्टडी ऑफ अ ट्रेन लोडिंग एंड पैसेंजर लोड्स ऑफ अ ट्रेन एंड देन वी कैन हैव वेरी गुड आइडिया के आपके कितने पैसेंजर्स आ रहे थे उसके लिए आपको फिर डाटा चाहिए होता है और वो जो डाटा है आपका के हिस्टोरिक डाटा उसकी बेस पे आप बड़ा अच्छा अंदाजा लगा सकते हैं कि फ्यूचर में आपके क्या पसेंजर लोड रहेगा तो अकॉर्डिंगली आप ट्रेन्स का शेड्यूल बना सकते हैं जब आपको पता है कि और अगर आप मंथ वाइज ये सारा डाटा इकट्ठा कर लें कि जनवरी में कितना है फेबरवरी में कितना है मार्च में कितना है क्या लोड से तो फिर आपको पता चल जाएगा कि विद इन ईयर आपके पास क्या लोड होते हैं Accordingly, जिस मंथ के अंदर आपके पास ज्यादा लोड आ रहा है आप उस जग, उस मौसम में या उस सीजन में या उस मंथ के अंदर आप ज्यादा ट्रेन चला सकते हैं बाकियों में आप ट्रेन कम कर दें या उनके जो बोगीज हैं वो कम कर दें जो पैसेंजर की क्योंकि आप खाली ट्रेन ना लेके जाए सो दिस इज हाउ दिस इज हाउ दिस थिंग हेल्प हेल्प अस इन In determining such decision, so this method is called uh, determination of probabilities through objective uh, way. Uh, and then we had talked about priori uh, probabilities, uh, so joint probabilities and compound probabilities. The concept was discussed in that part. Now let's continue the same uh, stuff. Uh, so we have uh, talked about. Uh, we are actually going to analyze uh, in detail about. Uh, first, we are going to start uh, going to uh, start with uh, and analyzing the probabilities. Okay, so the probabilities are assessed through three uh, methods, and we have discussed these two. Uh, so we are going to talk on that at this point in time. So subjective probabilities, uh, where objective or priori probabilities are inappropriate or impossible to assign. Subjective probabilities may be necessary. This is often the case with real-world problems, where risk events are rarely replicated exactly. But we have some opinion about them. Massive problems, let, let's say. Uh, so we do have an opinion like uh, this is going to happen. Or, and then mm, subjective probabilities are reflections of people's opinion uh, about the likelihood of events occurring. And subjective probabilities are prone to some degree of human error and biases. So we are going to talk on that as well. So uh, one very good method of uh, uh, carrying out uh, uh, this uh, subjective probabilities determination is Delphi technique. Uh, we have talked uh, a few times of Delphi. Let's uh, see how does this thing work actually. So how do we establish subjective probabilities and what errors are they prone to? We, we uh, gave the answers to that question. And one method of establishing subjective probabilities is the Delphi technique. With this technique, a group of experts is formed and each is asked to give an opinion about the probability to be established. Uh, the Experts are asked for their individual opinions and do not consult each other. So, you sit in a room and 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 you sit in a room. Now, experts are going to be hands on experience on that industry or on that industry. Like, if you are doing a construction project, then they will be engineers. And when you tell them that this is a risk, then every person has done some work in the market. So, it will be very good. 
کہ اس کا کیا ہوگا وہ سارے جو ہیں آپ کے پاس ویلیوز آ جائیں گے لیٹ سے آپ ڈوریشن کا ہم پوچھ لیتے ہیں کہ what is the duration of this one activity of excavation ایک انجنیر نے کہا دو ایک نے کہا چار ایک نے کہا دو ایک نے کہا تین ایک نے کہا بارہ ایک نے کہا ایک اب یہ جو سارا ڈیٹا ہے یہ ہم نے لے لیا اب اس کے اندر دیکھیں یہ جو بارہ ہے یہ بہت عجیب سا ہے اور یہ بھی بہت عجیب سا ہے یہ بہت کام دنوں میں کر رہے ہیں اور یہ بہت زیادہ دنوں میں ایکسکوشن کر رہے ہیں یہ جو ہے مور ایس ایک جیسا ڈیٹا اب ہم اس کا سٹیٹسٹیکل انیلیزز کر لیں گے the opinions are transformed into ordinal values five point trading scales in that case جو ہم اپنی example دے رہے تھے اس کے اندر ہم نے already numerical ہی سوال پوچھا تھا اور cardinal values lowest highest most likely value to be encountered so the Delphi panel data are collected and collated and descriptive statistics calculated اب ہم اس میں سے کیا کریں گے اس کا mean نکال لیں گے دو چار دو تین اور اس کا standard deviation نکال لیں گے اور اس طرح کے جب پیرامیٹرز آ جائیں گے وہ ہم مین رینج سٹینڈر ڈیویشن یہ ساری چیزیں نکال لیں گے اور اس کے بعد this information is given back to each expert together with his or her original opinion اب یہ جو ہم نے ڈیٹا کٹھا کیا تھا اب جب ہم اس کا ایک مین نکال لیں گے تو جو بھی مین آیا اس مین کے اوپر سے سٹینڈر ڈیویشن نکال دیں گے اور ویریانس نکال دیں گے جب ان صاحب کے پاس یہ جائے گا وہ یہ دیکھیں گے کہ مجورٹی جو ہے میں مین سے یہ جو لوگ ہوں گے یہ مین کے پاس ہوں گے یہ جو ہے مین سے بہت دور ہوں گے مثلا اگر مین ہے لائک سکس ایٹ ٹویلو سوری سکس ایٹ ٹویلو اینڈ ٹوڈی فور that is mean value so one two three four five six and divided by six So that is mean value you are having mean of 4. Now, this one is 4, so it's okay. This is its value. And the 3 one is also more or less with it. But the 2 one is a little bit far. But the 1 one is very far. And the 12 one is very far. So when you have all of them, it can be possible that the 2 one and the 1 one and the 12 one will see their opinion on their opinion. So the information is given back to each expert together with his or her original opinion. Each expert is now invited to amend his or her opinion. The process is repeated until no further changes in the statistics are detected and the mean of the final values is accepted as the established probability. So now when you repeat it, you have to repeat it in three or four times in the opinion. بڑی اچھی ایک رائے آ جاتی ہے کہ کیا لوگوں کی رائے ہے اور اس کے اوپر بیس کر کے آپ بڑا اچھا ایک یہ کام کر سکتے ہیں so the disadvantage is that the Delphi technique can be a lengthy one it may also be necessary to devise leading questions to focus the group اس کے اندر جس طرح آپ نے یہ کہنا ہے کہ آپ نے جو execution کی ہے بارہ دن والے تو جناب آپ نے human labor لی ہے یا machinery لی ہے اور اسی طرح آج انہوں نے ایک لی ہے ان سے پوچھنا چاہیے کہ آپ نے کون سی ایسی مشین لی ہے جس میں ایک دن میں ایک کام ہو جائے گا سو یہ اس طرح کی کوسٹنز بھی آپ نے ساتھ ان کو تاکہ ان کو پتہ چلتا رہے کہ ہم آپ ان کو یہ بھی بتا دیں کہ ہمارے پاس جو ایکسکویٹر ہے نہ تو ہم لیبر سے کام کروائیں گے اور نہ ہی کوئی بڑی سٹیٹ آف تی آرڈ مشین سے ہم جو ٹیپیکل ایکسکویٹر ہے اس سے کام کروائیں گے تو ہو سکتا ہے یہ لوگ پھر دوبارہ بڑا اچھا آپ کو Highlighting inconsistencies by asking similar questions can help to minimize errors. So, ये एक बड़ा अच्छा tool हो सकता है। उसके बाद Delphi is also used in research to elicit expert opinion about a range of issues with the aim to of arriving at a consensus view. So, this is this is again is very useful thing. So. And this is about subjective uh, probabilities and my question is uh, how do you gather opinion about uncertainties relating to your projects do you use this Delphi technique or you uh, stick to your objectively determined uh, probabilities or uh, priori pr probabilities so this is how we actually uh, conclude uh, uh, and we calculate about the probabilities of one risk okay and uh, for as far as subjective uh, probabilities are concerned, 
Now there are errors and biases. So what errors are likely to be encountered with subjective probabilities? Let's uh, have uh, people tend to overestimate low probabilities. Uh, wo basically impact dekhte hain zyada hai to uski probability ko bhi high karne ki koshish karte hain to ye bada ek uh, genuine issue hai ki aap probabilities ko kaafi sare log high karne ki koshish karte hain and people do not generally calibrate their uh, subjective assessments they do not monitor their own performance to check the consistency and accuracy of their assessments so usually kya hota hai ki subjective unki opinion hoti hai और अगर आपने यही सवाल किया कि एक घर की आपने घर कंस्ट्रक्शन करवाना है और उसकी खुदाई में कितना टाइम लगेगा तो वो आ, फैसला ये हुआ कि छः दिन तो एक साहब थे जिन्होंने बारह दिन कहा था पहले और अगर आप उनसे कुछ छः महीने के बाद पूछें तो और फिर हमने वो काम करवा लिया और वो वाकई छः दिनों में हुआ अब हमने इन साहब से राय ली तो इन्होंने फिर कहा बारह दिन तो लोगों के अंदर ये रुझान होता है कि वो अपनी चीज़ों को दोबारा कैलिब्रेट नहीं करते मेजोरिटी ऑफ दैम के साथ ये इशू होता है बट कुछ ऐसे एक्सपर्ट्स होते हैं जो बेसिकली कर लेते हैं बट मेजोरिटी पीपल एंड देन पीपल टेन टू डिपेंड अपॉन होरिस्टिक्स एंड होरिस्टिक्स आर रूल ऑफ थम दे विल यूज आ प्रेटो एटी ट्वेंटी रूल विदाउट कंसिडरेशन ऑफ द स्पेसिफिक्स ऑफ द सिचुएशन एक एग्जाम्पल है कि आपका uh, ये रूल ये है प्रेटो रूल ये है या प्रेटो चार्टिंग ये है कि uh, आपके uh, 80 परसेंट जो रिस्क होते हैं या प्रॉब्लम्स होते हैं या इश्यूज होते हैं वो 20 परसेंट रीजन की वजह से होते हैं लेकिन यही प्रिंसिपल आप जिंदगी के हर हिस्से में नहीं लगा सकते एट टाइम्स यू यू वांट टू यूज डिफरेंट टूल सो मैं ऐसे कुछ लोगों को भी जानता हूं जो uh, जो अपना वर्ड में बजाय टाइपिंग करने के या टेक्स्ट लिखने के वो एक्सल के अंदर टेक्स्ट बॉक्स के अंदर टाइपिंग uh, करते हैं सो दे आर शो कम्फर्टेबल विद एक्सल सो वो उसी को ही यूज करते रहेंगे और इसी तरह कुछ लोग हैं जो अपनी वर्ड के अंदर ही सारी प्रेजेंटेशन बनाएंगे सो इस तरह के ये चीजें जो है बेसिकली दे फॉलो द रूल ऑफ थम और उसी के ऊपर फिर काम करते हैं अच्छा जो हम आगे एग्जांपल दे रहे थे कि पीपल दे डू टेंड टू ओवर एस्टिमेट इज वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल इज द रियल प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ अ वर्कर बींग इलेक्ट्रिक्यूटेड विद अ फॉल्टी पावर टूल इन अयर इज वन इन वन लैक्स Uh, if we are, uh, if we were asked uh, our opinion about this, we might suggest one in ten thousand. We could be wrong by orders of magnitude. And uh, um, heuristics, uh, personal biases take three forms: representativeness, availability, anchoring, and adjustment. So, uh, representativeness. Uh, bias occurs when a probability is wrongly assumed to be too closely related to some feature of uh, its parent group. This biases may lead to base rate fallacies, fallacies and sample size fallacies. The bias usually occurs when we make wrong assumptions about the object or situation in question. And base rate fallacies uh, occur. Uh, when other diagnostic information is preferred without proper justification to the basic parameters or when uh, we are distracted by misleading information one case study records over the past 8 years show that tiling subcontractor completes 20% of all projects on time so wo jitne uske project se uske se 25% jo hai wo time ke upar karta you find that Out of his last five jobs, two were late, but the last three jobs were finished on time. अब अगर हम इधर देखें तो इसकी probability कितनी बनती है time के ऊपर करने की पच्चीस परसेंट और अगर हम इधर देखें तो पाँच के ऊपर लास्ट फाइव जॉब्स अगर उसकी देखें तो उसकी कितनी परसेंटेज बनती है थ्री बाय फाइव एंड दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स दैट दैट इज मीन सिक्सटी परसेंट अब अगर आप उसका आठ साल का रिकॉर्ड देखें तो वो पच्चीस परसेंट उसके आ, है और अगर आप पिछले पांच का देखें तो आप बेसिकली सिक्सटी परसेंट यू आर वंडरिंग वेदर टू वॉर्ड हिम एन अदर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और नॉट वट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट ही विल कंप्लीट दिस न्यू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑन टाइम 
तो अब आपने इसकी प्रोबेबिलिटी निकालनी है एक पिछले प्रोबेबिलिटी भी आपके पास है और अभी भी प्रोबेबिलिटी है अब आपका क्या ओपिनियन होगा डिफरेंट पीपल डू मे हैव डिफरेंट ओपिनियन कुछ लोग कहेंगे उसका आठ साल जो है वो है कुछ लोग कहेंगे वो ही इज इम्प्रूविंग सो यू कैन हैव डिफरेंट ओपिनियन ओवर देर सो आपके पास ऑप्शन है एक वट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट ही विल कम्प्लीट इज न्यू कॉन्ट्रेक्ट ऑन टाइम अगर तो आप ये वाला सारा मलाए पॉइंट टू फाइव ये आएगा या जो अभी हमने सिक्सटी परसेंट निकाली पिछले पांच जॉब को ये आएगा कौन सी आएगी सो दिस इज डिपेंड ऑन एवरी बॉडीज द एट ईयर बेस रेट इंडिकेट दैट द प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ कम्प्लीटिंग ऑन टाइम इज पॉइंट टू फाइव विदाउट नोइंग द पर्टिकुलर सर्कमस्टांसिस द डाटा फॉर द लास्ट फाइव प्रोजेक्ट शुड बी ट्रीटेड एज अन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव स्मॉल सैम्पल ऑफ द होल ऑफ द टेलिंग प्रोजेक्ट ओवर द पास्ट एट ईयर्स वो शुड देर फोर स्टिक विद द बेस रेट सो उसने जो हम आठ साल का डाटा है काफी ज्यादा है और जो उसने पांच प्रोजेक्ट किए हैं हो सकता है कि वो बिल्कुल बिल्कुल छोटे हों या उनके ऊपर मटेरियल अवेलेबल हो बड़ी जल्दी से होता हो या उसके अंदर आपने कोई रेट्स उसको ज्यादा दे दिए हों इस वजह से वो जल्दी कर लिया हो सो आप बेसिकली अगर आप पांच साल का देखें तो आप कंफ्यूज हो जाएंगे कि ये तो सिक्सटी परसेंट इसकी प्रॉबिलिटी की टाइम पे कर लेगा लेकिन आप यू विल स्टिक टू दैट जो कि आपका आठ साल का डाटा सो द पोटेंशियल टू कमिट अ बेस रेट फैलसी शुड फोर्स डिसीजन मेकर टू कंसिडर Uh, have the underlying conditions of the base rate changed sufficiently to warrant a change in the base rate itself uh, we should have asked if anything had happened to tiling organization recently new contract manager incentive scheme intro- introduced which would justify making a change in the base rate so in the sample size fallacy uh, people tend to ignore a basic property of a sample sizes assume that now there is a good case study assume that on average the rework rate in construction in pakistan is 25% that 25% of the work has to be redone let's say we are assuming it two construction firms have similar quality control procedures and company a has 2000 employees of whom 1500 are site operatives and company b has 32 employees of home 24 hour site operatives over a period of year which company is likely to record more days with rework exceeding 30% and less than 20% company a company b or both uh, about the same number of days so uh, if you uh, just uh, go through the things and then let's have the answer of that okay and then um, uh, the availability bias occurs when a probability is um, over uh, estimated due to more immediate retrieval of particular instances there is a probability value is preferred because it is more immediately available uh, to us through the influence of personal experience uh, you will be more likely to assign a higher probability to a scaffolding accident occurring if you have had personal experience of one or have recently heard of one for example if the mm, real probability of a scaffolding accident is 1 in uh, 100000 personal experience of such an accident happening might cause us to raise our estimate of the probability to as high as 1 in 1000 so over there what we are doing aap ek jagah project manager the aur us jagah pe ek accident ho gaya और उस जगह पे आपको उस एक्सीडेंट के लिए एक मिलियन कंपनसेशन की पे करना पड़ी अब क्या होगा कि एक दूसरे साहब हैं उन्होंने इस तरह की कोई चीज नहीं देखी जब आप उनके पास जाएंगे कि एक्सीडेंट ऑन साइट की क्या प्रोबेबिलिटी होगी तो वो कहेंगे एक लाख में से एक चांस है या एक मिलियन में से एक चांस है जब इन साहब के पास आएंगे जिन्होंने एक मिलियन ऑलरेडी पे किया हुआ है या पांच मिलियन पे किया हुआ है उस एक्सीडेंट का तो ये कहेंगे जी एक बड़ा सो मेरे नजदीक तो बहुत हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी है यानी कि वन बाय हंड्रेड वन परसेंट और इनका अगर देखा जाए तो शायद पॉइंट डबल जीरो 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 समथिंग परसेंट ओके
अब ये और ये सो डिफरेंट पीपल डू हैव डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंसिस एंड देन द लास्ट वन इज एंकरिंग एंड एडजस्टमेंट बाइस दिस अकर uh occurs when initial evidence is unable unavailable uh, to estimate a probability and uh, progressively adjustment can be made to it to estimate further probabilities the bias suggest that the people will tend uh, to continue to hold with the evidence of the starting point and the adjustment trend so keeping all these things in view how appropriate and practical are subjective probabilities in your organization so that is the question and now we have completed uh, three types of probabilities assessment and that is objectively uh, determined uh, probabilities subjective probabilities uh, and then the last one uh, was priori probabilities so you can use any one of them or a uh, combination of 1 2 and 3 whatever you you like uh, and obviously you have to use all these probability types on your project no one single probability type uh, uh, determination will help you um, but the combination of everything will be used so um uh, then we were talking about uh, select the most severe risk from the prioritized uh, identification list uh, undertake further decomposition analysis when all identified risks have been scored using the qualitative model then individual risk can be selected from the rank list for more detailed analysis and uh, for as far as decomposition over there is concern Uh, we have talked about uh, uh, the probabilities uh, and now let's start with decomposition so there are three methods available okay so fault tree analysis is one method event tree analysis is uh, another method and decision trees uh, that is uh, the third one so fault tree analysis the first one is uh, fault tree analysis so fault tree analysis is a diagramming approach it uses a top down deductive process by starting with a risk event then traces a logical sequence of possible contributory factors fta detail helps with probability and duration but not usually with impact assessment so that is very very important thing for us we are considering this we are not considering as uh, much of duration but we are considering uh, probability because uh, while we were uh, discussing about the characteristics of uh, uh, the risk uh, we had given more emphasizes on the probability and uh, we have uh, learned how to um, uh, um, uh, understand or assess the probabilities through Uh, three different methods uh, now fta mm, is uh, the one which helps us uh, in probability assessment as well uh, but it is uh, usually not helpful for the impact assessment <coughs> so by crossing i mean we are not using it but you know for duration you can use fta so it is necessary to assess the probabilities in fta diagram so let's uh, have this uh, over there uh, one word you need to uh, keep remembered is top down so there is a case study of fta okay so uh, the failure of auto deployment of uh, evacuation chute um so this is the uh, event or risk so auto deployment of elect, uh, evacuation evacuation ka matlab ye hai ki agar aap uh, jis tarah aapke plane hote hain to unke andar ek basically jab koi masla masail ho jaye koi dhuaan bhar jaye khada ho jahaz to uske foran hi darwaze khol diye jate hain aur uske andar se ek uh, aapko uh, evacuation shoot jo hai wo provide kar di jiske upar se aapne baag ke aur uske upar chhalang laga ke aap niche tak pahunch sakte hain aur phir wahan se aap dur ho sakte hain so uh, जो एवेक्शन शूट है अगर वो और इसी तरह लिफ्ट्स के साथ भी होता है और इस तरह बिल्डिंग्स के में भी होती हैं ये चीजें तो अगर वो फेल हो गई ये एक आपका रिस्क है अभी आपके पास ये प्रोबेबिलिटीज नहीं आई हैं
तो इसकी क्या रीजन हो सकती हैं अगेन uh, आपके पास जो रीजन हो सकती हैं वो हैं पावर फेलियर सिग्नल फेलियर और मैकेनिकल फेलियर एक तो ये कि आपकी पावर नहीं चल दूसरा है ये सिग्नल फेल हो गया तीसरा है कि मैकेनिकल फेल हो गया अभी हम इसको लेते हैं कि पावर फेलियर की फर्दर क्या किस्म किस्में हो सकती हैं पावर फेलियर की वजूहत ये हो सकती हैं कि सप्लाई फेलियर हो सकता है और आ, उसके बाद कंट्रोल इक्विपमेंट फेलियर जो इक्विपमेंट को कंट्रोल कर रहा है उसका फेलियर होने की वजह से वो पावर आगे नहीं दे रहा अगर तो सप्लाई फेलियर हो तो उसके फिर फर्दर आगे दो रीजन हो सकती हैं एक तो वायरिंग फॉल्टी थी और दूसरा जनरेटर फॉल्टी है अब जनरेटर फॉल्टी है उसकी भी दो रीजन हो सकती हैं एक तो जनरेटर का पार्ट फेलियर हो गया और लुब्रिकेशन फेलियर हो गया या आपको फ्यूल जो भी वो नहीं मिल रहा अब ये एक आपने ट्री क्रिएट कर लिया अब दूसरी तरफ आज सिग्नल फेलियर की अगर हम एग्जाम्पल ले लेते हैं तो इसमें यह हो सकता है कि मिसिंग सिग्नल और फॉल्टी सिग्नल दो रीजन हो सकती हैं अब अगर मिसिंग सिग्नल है तो वो पावर फेलियर में कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकता है और मिसिंग सिग्नल की फॉल्टी रिसीवर हो सकती हैं रीजन और फिर फॉल्टी ट्रांसमीटर भी हो सकता है और फॉल्टी वायरिंग भी हो सकती है इस तरह फॉल्टी सिग्नल की फॉल्टी सिग्नल की फॉल्टी ट्रांसमीटर भी रीजन हो सकता है रिसीवर भी हो सकता है और फॉल्टी वायरिंग भी हो सकती है सो दीज आर थ्री रीजन जिस ये हो सकती हैं अब इसी तरह आप मैकेनिकल फेलियर पे आ जाए मैकेनिकल फेलियर के अंदर मिसिंग कंपोनेंट हो सकते हैं फॉल्टी सर्विस हो सकती है और डैमेज uh, कंपोनेंट्स हो सकते हैं अब हमने क्या करना है कि जो सबसे नीचे वाले हैं इसकी प्रॉबिलिटी निकालनी है कि लुब्रिकेशन फेलियर और पार्ट फेलियर की क्या प्रॉबिलिटीज हैं अब हम मेथड यूज करेंगे जो है हमारा के प्रॉरी है ऑब्जेक्टिवली है और सब्जेक्टिव है कि लुब्रिकेशन फेलियर की क्या प्रॉबिलिटी निकलती है वो लेट से आपके पास आ गई कि वो थर्टी परसेंट है और पार्ट फेलियर की वो सेवेंटी परसेंट है अच्छा याद रखिए एक लेवल के ऊपर जो प्रॉबिलिटी होगी वो वन के इक्वल होगी सो पॉइंट थ्री प्लस पॉइंट सेवन इज वन सो यहाँ की आपकी प्रॉबिलिटी जो निकल आई इसकी और इसकी आपने कंपेरिजन किया सेवेंटी परसेंट इसकी आएगी थर्टी परसेंट इसकी आएगी अच्छा उसके बाद फिर ये जनरेटर फॉल्ट आ गया ये सप्लाई फेलियर का पार्ट है और सप्लाई फेलियर में दो चीजें हैं सो फॉल्टी वायरिंग कितने परसेंट है और जनरेटर फॉल्ट कितने परसेंट है तो नाइनटी नाइन टाइम्स जनरेटर का फॉल्ट होता है और एक टाइम जो है वो फॉल्टी वायरिंग का होता है अब ऊपर चले जाए ऊपर वाले लेवल पे सप्लाई फेलियर और कंट्रोल इक्विपमेंट फेलियर अब हमारे मुल्क के अंदर बिजली का मसला है तो 90 परसेंट चांसेस हैं कि वो सप्लाई का फेलियर होगा और एक 10 परसेंट होगा जो कंट्रोल इक्विपमेंट का फेलियर होगा उसके बाद अगर पावर फेलियर के ऊपर इसी तरह आप इधर से आ जाए बाकी सब लोगों बाकी सब चीजों की भी आप इसी तरह जो है वो कर लेंगे प्रॉबिलिटी साइन कर लेंगे इसकी भी प्रॉबिलिटी आप असाइन कर लेंगे जो आपने मेथड्स अभी थोड़ी देर पहले हम डिस्कस भी किए हैं और पिछले प्रीवियस सेशन में भी हमने डिस्कस किए थे तो अब ये आपने सारी प्रॉबिलिटी से इनके निकाल लें इन सिमिलर फैशन आपने इन तीन वन टू थ्री अब इनके ऊपर आपने बात करनी है कि इनमें क्या रीजन हो सकती हैं पावर फेलियर की जो प्रॉबिलिटी है वो कितनी है सिग्नल फेलियर की प्रॉबिलिटी कितनी है और मैकेनिकल फेलियर की प्रॉबिलिटी कितनी है तो आपने वो निकाल ली जब आपने वो निकाल ली तो यहां देखिए ये लिखा हुआ है P इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट डबल जीरो वन इफ यू कैन हैव लाइक सो वन बाय थाउजेंड इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ दैट अब ये जो वन बाय थाउजेंड आया ये कहां से आया इसी तरह का एक आपका एक और रिस्क होगा इसी तरह का आपका एक और रिस्क होगा सो केन देन यू विल हैव अ वेरी गुड आइडिया कि इसकी क्या प्रॉबिलिटी जो है वो निकल सकती है और देर आर थ्री पैरामीटर्स हैं हैंस यू कैन हैव फोर और फाइव और सिक्स और अकॉर्डिंगली यू मे हैव डिफरेंट प्रॉबिलिटीज ओवर देयर सो ये एक मेथड है जिसके तहत आप एक रिस्क की प्रॉबिलिटी को कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं दूसरा जो मेथड है दैट इज कॉल्ड इवेंट ट्री एनालिसिस एक तो हमने बात कर ली पहले एफ टी ए की फॉल्ट ट्री एनालिसिस और ये किसमें अच्छा होता है ये बेसिकली प्रॉबिलिटी के असेसमेंट करने में और ड्यूरेशन के असेसमेंट करने में अच्छा होता है और ये टॉप 
डाउन अप्रोच है इसी तरह आप जो इम्पैक्ट की असेसमेंट इसके नहीं कर सकते हैं अब हम दूसरा देखते हैं मेथड दैट इज ईटीए इवेंट री एनालिसिस सो एनालिटिकल अप्रोच इज ऑपोजिट टू एफ डी ए इट डिफर्स फ्रॉम फॉल्ट फ्री एनालिसिस इन दैट इट फोकस इज अपॉन इम्पैक्ट और कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस इंस्टेड ऑफ ट्रेसिंग कॉजेज सो इसके अंदर आप जो है इम्पैक्ट uh, की बात करते हैं कॉजेज की बात नहीं करते कॉजेज जो है वो आपने ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कर लिए इंडक्टिवली ट्रेसिस आर सब्सिक्वेंस ऑफ पॉसिबल आउटकम्स फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम अ ट्रिगर इवेंट यूजफुल फॉर एक्सप्लोरिंग प्रॉबिलिटीज इम्पैक्ट एंड ड्यूरेशन पर नीड नीड्स क्लियर आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ द रिस्क इवेंट्स सो वी वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड सम टाइम टू एक्सप्लेन दिस थिंग दिस इज वेरी गुड इवेंट थ्री एनालिस ओके सो let's say we are having uh, this uh, risk and that is ferry loading doors fail to close so uh, uh, if uh, that is having some probability just think just uh, 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 forget about this thing uh, now and there are uh, two options ferry loading doors fail to close no and yes then that is a reportable incident but no operators respond to alarm pehli option aagi jab ye band hone se ho gaya to agar usne respond kar diya yes reportable incident lekin agar usne nahi kiya to phir aage do options hongi c swell high and water enters ferry ab isme do options hain no to reportable crew failure aa jayega ke ji is operator ne काम नहीं किया था और अगर आ, अगर सी स्वेल कर गया और फेरी में पानी एंटर हो गया तो फिर दो ऑप्शन आ जाएंगी वेहीकल्स मूव एंड सीओ जी चेंजेस अगर तो नो है वाटर डैमेज और यस है तो फिर दो ऑप्शन आ जाएंगी फेरी कैप्साइज और अगर फेरी कैप्साइज नहीं होती तो वेहीकल डैमेज हो जाएगी और अगर यस हो जाता है तो पैसेंजर ट्रैप्ड एंड ड्राउन अब ऑप्शन हो सकती है अगर तो नो है तो वैसल तो कम से कम संक होगी और अगर यस है डिजास्टर विद फर्टैलिटीज सो ओवर देयर यू आर यूर यू सी ट्रिगर इवेंट्स आर देयर देन कॉन्सिक्वेंट इवेंट्स एंड देन कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस ओवर देयर राइट सो अब हम इसको देखते हैं किसकी क्या प्रॉबिलिटी है रिमेंबर इसकी और इसको जब हम सम करें तो एक प्रॉबिलिटी होनी चाहिए सो सेवेंटी परसेंट है प्रॉबिलिटी के पैसेंजर ट्रैप्ड और ड्राउंड और थर्टी uh, परसेंट है कि वो बच जाएंगे और इसके ऊपर हम देखते हैं कि अगर फेरी uh, कैप्साइज होती है हम कहते हैं कि इसकी प्रॉबिलिटी बहुत कम है ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट है और सेवेंटी फाइव देन वी गो बैक एंड देन हैव यू नो प्लस वन सबमिशन ऑफ दिस इज वन सबमिशन ऑफ दिस इज वन एंड दिस इज वन एंड दिस इज वन एंड देन वी कैन हैव द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर इवेंट from that so uh, over there you can see we are more focusing on the consequences or the impacts and impact uh, range from uh, reportable incident to reportable crew failure and then water damage vehicle damage vessel sunk and uh, the uh, one last is disaster with the fatalities so uh, we are focusing and we are explaining the things uh, we are uh, uh, actually giving impacts Uh, over there and then we are having probabilities as well over there so this type of uh, uh, analysis called uh, event tree analysis okay uh, so let's have a case study of uh, uh, this event tree analysis uh, we had uh, fault tree analysis um, and uh, uh, we had one very good uh, case study over there and then we had uh event tree analysis an example now let's have a case study so um uh, of uh, decision tree analysis the third one is decision tree analysis so identifies logical uh, decision tree analysis identifies the logical uh, uh, consecutive decision nodes and uh, outcomes 
what events can happen to affect the decisions okay so let's start with this example so tractor Mary Jane uh, has uh, to decide between alternative uh, methods for traveling from Melbourne to Sydney and the proposed alternatives are uh, fly drive her car and uh, with respect to train so this is an example of the scene tree okay so there is a node over there and one thing is she can fly and she can drive and she can use train okay so uh, there are two options over there as far as fly is concerned she may be get delayed and she may reach on time and as far as drive is concerned she may have uh, she may delay and she may have reached on time and as far as train is concerned she may reach uh, on time and she may get delayed so what we have to find out is uh, what is the effect of uh, total flying or drive when um, uh, for train so the assess uh, this is about risk assessment uh, uh, assessing risk impact so the accessible outcome of risk event for the risk taker and may be incorporated into a decision analysis te technique so um, EU is expected utility and assume values can be derived for probabilities of occurrence and worth of outcomes so um, these can be you are you are in need of both the probabilities of occurrence and worth of outcomes so if she reach on time what would, would be the worth and if she are uh, delayed what would be the worth and uh, if she reach by driving on time what would be the worth and if she can reach uh, on time uh, by driving what would be the worth and what would be the worth if she can reach on time by using train and what would be the worth if she reach late by using the train so we we want to have all these figures with us so expected utility can be displayed as a decision tree analysis so uh, so this is the uh, alternative and let's put these things over there so simplified example so uh, well uh, the probability of delaying is 60 percent as far as flying is concerned and as far as uh, on time is 40 percent for drive uh, uh, delaying is 20 percent very low uh, because she is driving her uh, own um, way remember do not get confused between uh, the uh, you know duration and uh, uh, delay you know this is hota ye hai ke ab aapka yahan dekhe 20% ki hai probability ke wo delay hogi car pe aur yahan 60% ki uh, probability hai ke wo delay hogi 60% both huge probability hai lekin jo uska fayda hai yahan jo uska nuksan hai wo dekhenge kitna ye 70 hai aur ye aapka 40 hai to agar wo 60% ki probability late ho kar ke bhi wo takriban double benefit usko phir bhi hoga air air ke sab by air jaane pe theek ho gaya to ye cheez aapko clear honi chahiye and then 80% probability is she will on time aur uh, 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 jo agar wo train ke sath jaati hai to 20% probability hai ke wo delay hogi aur 80% probability ke wo time pe upar hogi acha ji ab ye jo cheez hai 70 that is the benefit agar wo late bhi pahunche to phir bhi usko 70 ka benefit hoga aur agar jaldi pahunche to well 100 ka benefit ho jayega aur agar wo 20% late ho jaye aur ek to wo 20% chance hai lekin agar wo late ho gayi to phir uska nuksan hoga acha khasa aur 40% 40 usko aur time pe pahunch ke bhi wo maximum 70 tak ja sakti hai yani ki on time bhi agar pahunche to fly ke upar late ho gaye ruke bhi uska wo equal ho jayegi isi tarah train ka hai अब आपने एक्सपेक्टेड यूटिलिटी निकालनी है फ्लाई की वो बड़ा सिंपल है प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ दैट इवेंट विद द प्रोबेबल इंपैक्ट 0.6 टाइम 70 एंड प्लस 0.4 प्लस इनटू 100 सो दैट इज 82 और ड्राइव का 40 मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 0.2 0.2 प्लस इनटू 40 प्लस 0.8 इनटू 70 सो दैट इज 
56 and 8 uh, that is 64 and similarly then uh, there is 20 percent probability of delay and that value is uh, 60 so 0 0.2 into 60 and 0 0.8 into 80 and that is 76 so in this fashion we are having three so over there we can have very good idea uh, the expected utility utility is 82 for flying hence that is recommended thing So through that example, we have uh, reached to the conclusion uh, and uh, we just want to remember one thing, expected uh, monetary value, that is a uh, financial adoption of expected utility. So risk exposure is probability into magnitude of loss or uh, profit, as risk is both opportunity and threat. And expected monetary value is one way of examining this. So let's have a very good case study. Uh, so for particular risk uh, event, there is 5% chance that the loss would amount to 2.5 million. And 20% chance that the loss would amount to 2 million. And 30% chance that the loss would amount to 1.5 million and a 45 percent chance the loss would be amount of 1 million. So what is the EMV, expected monetary value? So the answer is very simple. What you have to do is you have to multiply probability with the pro uh, probable uh, impact or loss or profit, whatever the situation is. So 5 into 2.5, 20% of 2 million, 30% of 1.5 million, 45% of 1 million. So if you multiply 5, so you get, and uh, you get 5, and then you divide it by 100 because you are multiplying with 5 percent or 0 0.5 or something so you are having 125 left now add these values you are getting 1.425 triple zero so the risk this is the uh, this is the maximum value of uh, uh, your expected monetary value so the risk averse manager, uh, risk averse is one who does not like the risk on uh, and uh, he's uh, very proactive and uh, he does not like the risk around. So the risk averse manager would plan for a loss of less than um, one, four to five, triple zero, be less competitive. A risk neutral manager would plan for loss of uh, 1.4 million and risk seeking manager would assume an actual loss of less than 1.4 so uh, so this is this is uh, different attitudes uh, considering expected monetary value okay so uh, uh, assessment of risk impact through expected monetary value uh, generally the expected monetary value is reliable only over a large number of similar risk events. For example, car accidents insurance. So the, the insurance industry relies on the large sample size for the stability of its risk statistics and is therefore predominantly mathematical. Projects unique in nature, remember, do not have such a large sample size and risk management is more dependent upon expert opinions. <coughs> Okay, uh, what is Monte Carlo simulation? Uh, the, the, the other day we have talked about simulation, but what is Monte Carlo? So the technique can cope with multiple factors and with multiple factor variable values. Pro problem of interdependencies between f uh, f factor variables and may require special programming to deal with interdependencies affecting, affects the use of standard MC computer applications. So uh, then uh, we have uh, this um, assessment of risk impacts 
premiums and contingency sums. So the inclusion of additional monetary sums in estimates, budgets, tenders to allow for the impacts of specific or general risks. So this may be an estimate of financial impact of risk occurrence, an arbitrary amount included in compensation uh, to compensate the risk taker for taking the risk, or the cost of transferring the risk to another part, insurance premium. So it is rarely a precisely calculated amount, but uh, we can do that uh, with qualitative, quantitative risk analysis. And once again, uh, this, uh, there is a sensitivity analysis. So um, uh, sensitivity analysis involves uh, the uh, investigation of alternative risk parameters by analyzing the effect of changing the values of the factor variables in a stepwise manner. For example, the effect of different probabilities of occurrence might be investigated by calculating the risk outcomes after increasing or decreasing probability values in regular steps. For example, 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.1, uh, 0.9, 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 0 0.07, etc. So this is limited to changing one factor variable by one step at a time. So most risk situations involve multiple factors, each of which may be variable in value. Some factors may be interdependent as well. Okay, so uh, now there is a third dimension of uh, risk uh, uh, valuation. Uh, we have talked about uh, two dimensions, and uh, one is uh, the probability. The other is impact. We have talked about three uh, uh, methods for determining probability and uh, those are objectively determined uh, and we have done one case study of train passenger loads and then priori uh, and we have uh, discussed about um, uh, the types for the types compound priori and uh, joint probability concept and then we had discussed about subjectively determined probabilities. So these are few uh, ways uh, to assign probabilities to s events. And then we had discussed about uh, decision trees, fault uh, tree analysis, and event tree analysis. So fault tree analysis is again helpful for the assessment of the probabilities of the event, whereas um, event tree analysis is again can be used for the uh, probability assessment. As far as impact is concerned, you know, we, we do know that the impact is not uh, that good uh, uh, evaluated with uh, that fault tree analysis, but can be uh, uh, used uh, by or calculated by uh, the event tree analysis. And then decision trees are helpful for uh, assessment of that impact. Then we can use Monte Carlo simulation and sensitivity analysis for the um, understanding or calculation of the impact. And we have talked about that uh, uh, the, there are two uh, more important uh, uh, characteristics of uh, the, uh, uh, these uh, risks. But uh, many people, uh, they are also you know, of the opinion that the risk duration is very important. So the period during which the risk taker is exposed to a particular risk is very important. So uh, usually the exposure to the risk event is not considered um, and may need to consider period of exposure to the consequences for for example professional liability and let's have few so risk impact assessment should also consider the time aspect associated with the risk so it may be acceptable to retain a low probability high impact risk if the total period of risk exposure is short but if the mm, uh, duration is long uh, then you do not want to retain that high impact, low probability. Then you want to do something else, you know. So the, your strategy will be uh, then changed as far as response is concerned. And so for that, uh, then you will have another uh, set of uh, parameters, right? So uh, impact assessment is very much dependent on the duration part of. Uh, uh, one very good example is if uh, we are having. Um, one risk and uh, that is 
like uh, rain okay so the risk of rain on uh, construction project so if uh, it is raining for uh, one hour then the impact will be different but if the same rain is uh, uh, there for two days <coughs> quite different impact will be quite different okay for two days so for one if uh, it is raining for one hour what would be the impact what what can be the impact okay if there are hundred people are working in open and they are uh, stopped by the rain so one hour uh, project duration will be affected and one hour of cost of these people and the cost of uh, the equipment and material uh, that will be the impact on uh, your project but if your um, resources are stopped for two days now the cost is huge so the time duration will be uh, you know uh, there so um, the impact on two parameters will be quite different so similarly we can have other risks and uh, they have other uh, related um, um, impacts and durations uh, with them so fewer of the examples are first example let's say removing structural support of an existing foundation so that is high impact but low probability and short period similarly weather risk on a pipeline project may be constant so probability and impact so weather risk on an office building should reduce impact after roof is fixed and then accident risk on pipeline project may be cut constant probability and impact and accident risk on an office building should reduce probability after scaffolding is removed but impact would remain constant the impact will be constant a death is a death but the probability of an accident occurring should diminish over time for the building project as working conditions inside become less dangerous okay so uh, that's uh, that's it we have uh, reached to the conclusion of our today's uh, uh, project uh, and uh, um, uh, the project of uh, one hour and that was to uh, let you people know of uh, risk management uh, one process and that is uh, quantitative risk analysis and in that uh, this was the second part to our uh, risk uh, analysis uh, and in this part we have discussed how to you know, determine uh, the probability subjectively and uh, what could be the errors and biases in subjective probabilities and how can we eliminate those and then we have talked about uh, fault uh, tree analysis and then uh, event tree analysis and decision trees and then we have talked about expected monetary value mm, and uh, assessment of the probabilities and impact and in the last we have talked about uh, the duration of uh, risk and how risk duration can actually affect uh, the um, uh, impact and as far as this third uh, dimension is concerned we usually take only two dimensions and those are the uh, probability and the impact so uh, when we are taking two dimensions Im impact is uh, the second one then we are actually considering the duration uh, uh, duration, duration uh, fact uh, in impact type thing okay hum ye karte hain ki jo duration hai hamari wo hum impact wale mein le lete hain ki kya impact hoga aur usse mein duration calculate kar lete hain aur usi ke upar hum phir uh, impact nikal lete hain so that's it uh, we have uh, concluded this lecture i say thank you uh, but before we uh, move further let's have a, uh, have the end note of today and uh, that is projects done in isolation are usually failed projects so um, thank you good luck and allah hafiz